this actually is a really nice size. It's not too small, that gets kind of toy-like, but it's big enough that it comfortably fits in, in my hand anyway. And uh, yeah, good size, 60 bucks. At the time, I think I paid 200. Granted, these are probably considerably cheaper now, but um, again, why did I buy this? Do I need it? No, I don't need it. But for $60, I thought, damn, that would come in handy. Now I now have the option to take one to work and leave it there, you know? Anyway, this is not a review of this tool, guys. Uh, again, there's plenty of YouTube videos, though, done by competent individuals that give you all the tech specs. I'm not interested in showing you that. I'm just showing you the appealing features that attracted me to the meter. Perhaps it will attract you. I'm not selling any of this stuff. You guys spend your money where you want. So I have a few tools with this style of uh, display, guys. They seem to be uh, kind of useless in strong sunlight. So just going out of the garage here. Let's get the sun right behind me. There's my shadow. And you can see it's actually still really quite readable. However, the light button on the side that you can use for the flashlight function, you long press it for the flashlight. If you short press it, it toggles into white screen mode and you can see how much more readable that is in strong sunlight. That is a really nice function. A $60 tool with this function. Come on, credit where credit is due, that's pretty good. Just look at the, uh, quick look at the temperature uh, sensing capacity here, guys. As you can see, I do not have the thermistor lead actually hooked up. There's clearly one internal in the ring because you can still sense, it's basically sensing case temperature, I guess, right? So this has been sitting in my car here for a few minutes in the sun, uh, 26 degrees. Clearly there's an issue with the software here. Um, the minimum temperature here has not been zero degrees, not even close, um, but it's showing the correct, this is the correct um, uh, cabin temperature in the car at the moment. So let me show you the, uh... The clamp in uh, graphing meter mode here guys it's kind of uh, it's nice that's why i actually bought this clamp um so here you can see the car is asleep so just the the minimal current draw from the uh, ecm in the keep alive mode so let me unlock the car most of the current draw here initially is from the, the ecm uh, obviously waking up and unlocking the doors that's a lot of current right you can see the min max value well the max value anyway changed Again, I have the current oriented like this, although it looks a bit awkward on screen. So if, it's, if I flip it the other way here, so it sits more naturally, then the uh, positive current draw is reflected on the graph in the opposite direction. Of course, it matters which way the loop is, right? So I just unlocked it. But if you don't action the uh, car one way or another, the, the locks will relock in like 30 seconds. There it goes, and there's the current there. You can see. So let me hit the button twice unlock that's the driver's door look at the max now all the locks on the doors will open you can see that's reflected in the current draw there right so that to me is actually not bad not bad at all As i can see how this could prove useful okay so reorienting the clamp here guys that's done for a reason so that any uh, draw from the battery is going to be shown as a drop. Any uh, charge input from the battery um, from the alternator is going to be shown uh, in the positive direction. Again, this thing is constantly uh, changing. The scaling is auto scaling based on the relative measurements um, at the very moment, right? That's why you see the changes on the screen because nothing's really changing. It rescaled. Okay, let me start the uh, car kind of understand what I'm talking about. So we should see the uh, starter current draw on the max figure there. I think it'll be a negative figure. So again, you kind of have to calibrate your head around the orientation of the loop here guys so the minimum you'll notice is minus 240 amps that's clearly the starter draw right so again it's rescaling here Fifteen amp, that's 15 amps of charge uh, current it's going into the battery right now you'll notice it's in a positive direction 
and it's dropping off as the battery actually charges. Perhaps I should have shown you the battery voltage at the same time. I can't graph the uh, amperage and the voltage simultaneously. You can only graph one parameter um, at a time. So the charge current is actually coming down now. Which makes sense. So just a uh, stabilized idle here, guys. Quarterish, five amps. Charge current. The game sounds sensible, reasonable. And this can actually graph in amperage, in voltage mode, and in resistance mode. Uh, I guess even in <laughs> even in capacitive mode. That uh, seems to be a bit weird. Frequency. And uh, yeah, you're not going to get that in the live or the NCV, obviously. So yeah, that's that's not bad. If you look at it, you can get a sense for how quickly it updates. Of course, you can't adjust the time base. That's not going to be fast enough to get a, um, a sense of a relative compression test, which is unfortunate. But um, still, I think it's pretty useful. The uh, so we got weird in the um, in the sense. The graphing was a little bit weird because of auto scales. You need to be mindful of that. Um, the scaling will adjust depending on the relative measurements it's actually taken. You need to be well aware of that because if you're incrementing by like one ohm at a time on the decade box here, for example, the increments will re be reflected in the graphical manner on the screen. If you all of a sudden decide to add an extra thousand ohms or 10,000 ohms, the screen will re... Um, will recalibrate with respect to the scaling and you can get weirded out if you look at the graph holistically you know um i hope i'm making my point here guys you just need to be mindful of the auto scaling i think the timeline on the graph uh is 20 seconds total actually I think that's just a bit 20 seconds another nice feature the ability to actually display voltage and amperage in a dual mode um, and in fact it's a, a triple mode um, display uh, mode of operation one too many modes uh, you can see I have the amperage being displayed here I have the um, the voltage obviously I'm just hooked up to the battery terminals here for the voltage sense it guys and the clamp around the ground here for the current and it actually displays the relative power uh, at, at instantaneously, right? So let me go turn the headlights on. Which is about um, in the low beam mode, it's about 50 watts each. So that should be about an additional 100 watts of power-ish. 133 watts. Yeah, of course, because the there's um, some other lighting that will come on with the headlights here. The tail lights, of course, will come on. So, yes, of course. So there's a wee bit of additional power there. It's not just the headlights. That makes perfect sense. So current draw, and um, uh, the battery voltage is dropping a wee bit under under the load here. Statically, of course, the generator is not uh, providing any charge current, and you can see the relative wattage there again from a $60 $60 Canadian meter let me just put the high beams on here high beams are on and that should add a bit of an additional 20 watts ish there you go yeah so that's just from the low beams to the high beams we bit additional current draw there what was that 3 amps ish 3 amps times 12 yeah 
Kind of makes sense, right? 30 watts, 20 watts. Yeah, uh, I'm well pleased with this, guys. This is not a, um, a review. This is not an assessment of this meter in any way, shape, or form. There's tons of guys that are way more knowledgeable than me on the on the web that can give you a better idea. I'm just giving you a couple of the attractive um, functions for me, why I wanted this. So right. let me just show you the zero function here on this, guys. It's, to me, a lot of guys don't use a zero function to their advantage when they're using a clamp on amp mirror. So I have the high beams, sorry, the low beams on at the moment, right? As you can see. So let's just clamp around the, the ground here and we'll measure that current. So that current is 10 amps. So now if I press the power button quickly, you'll see the zero icon there. No, it's nulled out that current that it was measuring. Okay, so now it's looking for any current either under or over that level before. Let's go put the high beams on. Okay. High beams are on. So now there's an additional 30 watts-ish from the high beams or 2.5 amps of current. And again, you can sense that differential simply by using the zero function. What's up, boys? Cheers.